All right, so I'm working on some other stuff here in the shop area, so I thought I'd take a minute, talk just a little bit about uh, bands that are wanting to do their own in-ear monitor mixing. I mean, with mixing consoles and the gear becoming more affordable and smaller, bands can actually start uh, having some of their own gear uh, that travels with them, you know, to make it easier for them to do a show. I am completely on board with uh, bands uh, wanting to run and manage their own in-ear mixing. Uh, some time ago we did a show where uh, the band uh, wanted to use their, their own type of in-ear. In this particular event, they had a bunch of transmitters, which uh, we just plugged directly into the snake. And then these things transmitted directly to their in-ear monitor packs. Really easy to set up, obviously. Uh, but as far as uh, front house duties, well, we still had to make sure that each one of them had a good mix. Okay, in this um, other event that we did, this band, they had their own monitor, uh, sort of in-ear monitor rack. Uh, it wasn't too complicated. They still needed... Uh, two feeds, two return feeds from the console, uh, which we gave them, and then they took care of how they wanted to distribute that uh, amongst themselves. Uh, we still had to provide them with the mix, and we still had to work with them to make sure they got what they wanted to hear in their in-ears was uh, what they needed. Uh, but we still had to provide a mix for them. Now, the difference here is that if a band wants a full in-ear monitoring rig, that um, getting them a signal from the console is a little bit different than how these, these other bands did it. Okay, so what I'm about to show you here is how uh, you can get a full in-ear monitor set up for a band. All right, so as I said, if a band has their own in-ear monitor rig, meaning they've got their own mixer, they've got all their own wireless, they have everything that they need to have their own in-ear system. The trick, not the trick, but how you do this is you use a snake splitter. And the snake splitters have, uh, there's two, this has two trunks on it, this is very basic. This is all inputs, there is no returns on here. And uh, this one here, I've got uh, set up for a front of house, and this one is tagged as monitors. Now this type of setup will work with analog and digital systems. So if you're a sound provider and you do not have one of these, uh, this is something you may want to get. Uh, as I said, just because as bands start to go to their own gear, they want to be able to interface into a system, whether it's a house system or a sound provider system. And also, if you're a band, uh, you, and, if you, and if you have your own in-ear monitor system, you may want to get something like this because uh, not everybody or you know, not all sound providers have a splitter. For me, it's well worth the expense to have this just in case that it's needed. Um, and this one's 32 channels, but um, obviously not everybody needs 32 channels. Like so the front of house trunking, it connects into the front house snake. So let's say that this is coming directly from front of house, the front of house console. So for the splitter, all we got to do is connect these, uh, this fan tail into the front of house console. This is a 24 channel snake with uh, eight returns. So I'm just gonna be using a 16 inputs out of the 24. Okay, so now that the uh, front house side of the trunk is connected into the front house snake, we're gonna take the monitor trunk and we're gonna connect that into the monitor console. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm just using the uh, Personas 32SC as a monitor console in this example. Once again, let's just say that this 
console, this belongs to the band, and this is their in-ear monitor system, their whole complete system. So what we've done is we have uh, taken the monitor trunking for the snake splitter and we've run it into the monitor console, into the 16 inputs. We're not connecting anything to the snake. We do not need to do that. So this is how we can get a fully independent monitor system uh, functioning for a band. So here's what we've got so far. The front of house trunking is connected into the front of house snake. The monitor trunking is connected directly into the monitor console. All we need to do is now connect all the inputs for the band this is inputs only. All the inputs will go directly into the snake splitter. Okay, I'm going to take connection number one. Let's just say this is a vocal, lead vocal. So the lead vocal is going out the front of house trunking and it's connecting into the front of house snake. So the lead vocal will go to front of house. And it also, coming out the monitor send here, the monitor trunking, lead vocal is also going to be directed toward the monitor console. So whatever gets plugged into here is going to the front house as well as to the monitors. Now some of you are thinking, well wait a minute, what about phantom power? Well in this kind of situation, uh, it doesn't matter where phantom power comes from. Uh, it's usually a very common practice to have phantom power. Uh, being powered from the monitor console. But if the band has their own monitor console and maybe they don't want to turn on phantom power, maybe their phantom power is not working, you can easily just turn it on at front of house. As long as the microphone gets its uh, 48 volts, it doesn't care which console it's coming from. All right, so uh, if you're thinking, well, if this is my input, then how do I get uh, front of house sound? Well, as a sound provider, this is super simple. You're just going to connect everything that you normally would into your outputs. Except if a band has their full in your monitor system, you do not need to connect anything into your returns on the snakehead. The only thing you're going to need is just output that's going to go to the front of house, the main PA. And if you're a band and you're setting up your in-ear monitor system at a place that has a splitter, don't worry about the house or the sound provider's outputs. They're responsible for that. So in my example here, this is just, uh, let's just say we're using full range. That's the only thing I'd have to connect to this. All right, so what happens if uh, front of house is using a digital setup? It makes no difference. Okay, it doesn't matter what the front of house is, analog or digital. It's all the same thing. We still have inputs where we're gonna connect the splitter into. All right, as you can tell, it's, it's that easy. There's no difference between an analog and digital setup uh, for front of house. Um, it all pretty much functions the same way. And, and uh, the provider, I'm just gonna connect this into here. Let's say that's just your main single output. You don't need to connect anything into uh, the other outputs because all these other outputs are gonna be handled by the uh, band's monitor console. There's no difference. All right, uh, another great advantage of using a splitter is, and, and let's, say, let's say this is the setup. You've got a digital uh, front of house box, and let's say you're doing a festival, and there's uh, multiple bands planning on performing, and let's just say some of those bands are going to be using their own in-ear monitor system but the other bands need passive wedges. So, this cable here, let's just say this is the front house. You've already got this set up. Uh, the good thing about the splitters is that there's, say that's monitor one. We're gonna put in, uh, say, monitor two. 
And here is monitor three. You can still run passive wedges on the stage for the bands that do not have in-ear monitor systems. So for the bands that don't have in-ear monitors, you would just run your setup like you normally would and mix the monitors from front of house. But then when a band comes on that has an in-ear monitor rig, you don't have to take all this stuff out. All you got to do is just turn it down, leave all the stuff connected, and then let the splitter take care of routing the signal to their monitor console, just as I had shown before. So you can have your full set of passive wedges along with providing all the inputs that are needed for the band to have their own in-ear monitor system. So when the band that's on stage is using in-ears and you've got your volumes down, once they leave, all they've got to do is just disconnect the cables, the uh, trunking monitor cabling, from their rack. When they do that, let's say the next band comes up, they need passive wedges, you just bring your monitor sends over here back up for the passive speakers. And then the next band that comes on, all they got to do is just, now obviously maybe a stagehand would, um, <clears throat> pardon me, maybe a stagehand would be doing this, but all they got to do is just connect the fan tail from the, for the monitor trunking into their console. And then they're pretty much set. All right, that's more of an advanced type of setup, uh, but that's how you can do it. And I'm only going to pick on the uh, Presonus side of things. That's just because that's what we use here. But um, we do not actually need to use uh, an analog splitter if we wanted to use a Presonus console with a Presonus system. Using this as the monitor for an in-ear monitor system, we can still connect all, everything over here using the EtherCon connection in the back. And then that EtherCon connection would connect into either the uh, NSB down here into one of the ports, or we would connect it to a switch, and then everything would talk to each other. The Personas console would have to be set up as a standalone system. And I did a video covering this uh, not too long ago, but it describes how to set this up, uh, uh, set up two Personas consoles uh, in the same environment. One would be front of house and one would be monitors. Uh, so if a band comes in with their own in-ear monitor system and they're using a Presonus, we can work with them to get their console set up to do um, in-ear monitors. And the trick is, as I said before, is to set it up as a standalone, not as a monitor system. And um, on the back of the console, they're still going to take all the uh, analog outputs and they're going to connect all those into their wireless transmitters. And with this kind of setup, it doesn't really matter uh, what the monitor console is. I mean, I, I can do this. I can set up the same thing here using an Allen and Heath. I, I can stick a, a Behringer console in here. It just doesn't matter what's being used. Because with the splitter, you really are running nearly two completely independent systems, front of house and monitors. All right, this is just an overview. It's, this is not bad to do. It said I highly promote bands uh, to running their own monitors just because they can set what they want and us at front of house, we can focus on the front of house sound. All right, hope this helps. Thanks for watching.